morning. Thank you for having me. Over the past few years, ALA presidents have focused on many of our core values, intellectual freedom, advocacy, and diversity, with incredible results. Intellectual freedom issues will always be at the forefront of our professional responsibility, requiring constant diligence on our part. During the Band Book Week program in Bughouse Park in Chicago, we heard Kristen Peckall, the young adult librarian who successfully fall, fought to keep Stephen Chbosky's The Perks of Being a Wallflower out of the West Bend, Wisconsin Public Library with support from ALA Office of Intellectual Freedom, one of our many IF successes this year. In the area of advocacy, a toolkit is available free of members wishing to develop a local advocacy program. Each year, ALA sponsors a National Advocacy Day. Last year, I was delighted to be part of this successful National Advocacy Day held in conjunction with ALA Annual Conference in Washington, D.C. New programs such as Emerging Leaders and Spectrum Scholars are infusing our profession with people of color and identifying energetic, creative people to help shape the direction of our organization through their innovative efforts. I applaud these initiatives and will work to see them flourish and strengthen into deeper, more integral elements of our organization. These core values, intellectual freedom, advocacy, and diversity, must be sustained and will always be a part of our ALA presidential agenda. I pledge to continue to stay vigilant on these core values. During my year as president, I would like to concentrate on two additional goals to the ALA 2015 strategic plan, transforming libraries and member engagement. As long as I have been involved in libraries, I've always been evolving, changing, transforming. The question is, how can our professional association help make the transformation easier, quicker, and more, less painful? What can the American Library Association do for us, its members, to help us and our libraries meet the latest budgetary or technological changes that we face? The best library staffs have a knack for engaging in transformational change. We are at a crossroads. We must decide if we are going to transform ourselves at this crossroads now. I want ALA to help members tap into the knowledge and experience of our membership to share with each other the powerful lessons that we have learned. My theme, Leading from Libraries, says that we can share, train, and showcase what we've learned and mentor those who want to learn more. We can do all of this with the amazing social networking tools that we have available to us today. I'm inspired by my many colleagues around the country who have achieved enormous success in these incredible difficult economic times. I want to champion these librarians and library successes during my year as president. I want to connect members with each other by finding ways to allow us to communicate more easily, openly, and quickly. Over the past three years, our nation's, indeed our global economy, has faced some extraordinary difficult times. This situation is not eased in any great extent yet. ALA should assume a greater role helping librarians cope with the new normal. In a nutshell, I'm saying we librarians are engaging in a truly transformational change. And as we transform our libraries, let's engage ALA membership to share our experiences and multiply the effects of what we're learning. Some of the ideas I have are, let's provide a full virtual conference for members who are unable to attend. Let's capture the stories of award-winning librarians and libraries to post them on the ALA website for others to be able to replicate. Let's provide an ALA Emerging Technology Sandbox where members and staff can experiment, practice, and learn for each other. These are just a few of my ideas as how we can tap into and knowledge that we have to get ALA members excited about being members of the organization. I want to hear what each of your ideas are that we are transforming, just as the information itself has transformed. Together, we can lead from libraries into a successful future. I too appreciate the opportunity to offer some of my thoughts on why I want to be president of the American Library Association. I share Sue Stroyan's view that we've accomplished much and that there are great challenges ahead. What I want to share with you in my brief statement is what I believe I will bring 
and how it is that I hope to engage this association in continuing to do the great work that it is underway, but also to be well ready for the challenges that have yet emerged for us. I think this is a real time of opportunity for libraries, those of us who work in them, and also for the American Library Association. I have believed throughout my experience with ALA that ALA is the organization that is best positioned to help libraries face their challenges and issues, but it also has been instrumental in the development of the professional capabilities of so many of us. And I count myself clearly among those who benefited almost from the beginning of their membership within the association. One of the things that really have caused me to accept the invitation to run for this office was the new strategic plan. I was very excited to read it. I see the new strategic plan as exactly the kind of framework that ALA will need and the kind of framework that will engage both our current members and our future members in doing meaningful work to ensure that libraries of all type and those who work in them will thrive in the future and continue to develop their capacity to meet the challenges that they face. I believe that the time is right for someone with my skills, capabilities, and experience to be in this important leadership role. I no longer work in a library. I've worked in a library as an employee for now 20 years. I started my consulting practice 20 years ago with the firm commitment to do the best that I could through my work to enable people to develop their leadership capacity and to learn the competencies that they would need to be effective in the current state as well as the future world that we might face. 20 years ago, I had no idea that there would be such a need for development of these capabilities on the part of everyone working in library organizations. I've had the real privilege of being someone who has facilitated learning and development for organizations, for multi-type consortia, but also for a whole host of individuals in the profession. One of the things I would bring as president of ALA is the opportunity to engage the people with whom I've already worked, as well as those who are ready to apply their intelligence and their capabilities to the future work of ALA. And I see the strategic plan as being an excellent framework for that engagement. While I've not worked in a library, I've had the chance to work in many different types of libraries. And the real privilege that has come along with being able to help those libraries accomplish their purpose has been the opportunity to see the capacity of people brought to the forefront when these individuals were not even aware of the competencies that they held to meet the challenges that were in front of them. I have the experience on a regular basis of seeing what people are able to accomplish and to be someone who fosters and facilitates their efforts to do that. And I would absolutely bring that style and approach to ALA. The four areas in which I'm most interested in engaging people through the campaign, but particularly once I'm president, are first and foremost leadership. We have a lot of activities in this area. I think there's an opportunity now to study and understand what they are and to do the work to create a comprehensive program for the association. We have always done good work and been stewards in all of the different units within ALA in the area of learning, my second area. My third area is literacy, because I believe for a very long time that the work we do as leaders in learning is what really contributes to an informed populace in this country as well as around the world. And my fourth area is the international area. I look forward to opportunities to work with people who are already engaged in the international arena to look for ways to strengthen what it is that ALA, but also its members, will do. And the last point I want to make is I especially look forward to working with the new members of the association and engaging new colleagues to join us as we move forward. I am one of more than 61,000, but I look forward to the opportunity to be the person who can engage my colleagues in the important work that lies ahead. Thank you.